Welcome to version 4.0 of the Stream Deck MIDI plugin. I have decided to mark this as a major update since there are major changes in the plugin. This version is the first version to run natively on Apple Silicon. And to achieve that, I had to rewrite the complete graphical solution using a new graphics library. And due to differences between the old and the new graphics libraries, there may be some minor details that don't look exactly as before, but I don't think you will notice. So on Apple Silicon, you no longer need Rosetta to use the plugin. The next change is for variable step size for dials. In previous versions, you had the option to set a fixed step size or to set zero to have a variable step size. This worked well for normal MIDI value ranges, zero to 127, but it did not work well for custom value ranges. So I had to change the algorithm and when doing so, I also added a couple of alternatives. So now it looks like this. You have a drop down with a couple of different algorithms for variable step size. The slower algorithm gives you a better control for fine adjustments, while the faster algorithms give you a quicker acceleration of the value changes. The step size is now used by all algorithms and mark the minimum value change that will be performed if you make a single step rotation with the dial. So let's move on to scripting. And you can download the example scripts from the information below. First, I want to mention a breaking change. Some versions ago, I introduced timers, script timers, and they were, by definition, global. In this version, I introduce local timers that are only visible in the script where they are defined. Local timers are prefixed with LT underscore. So if you have variables that are prefixed LT underscore, you need to rename those variables. Next new feature is selection lists, which were actually part of version 3.12.1. With selection lists, you can display a list of options in the dial display and take care of the selected option in your script. I have an example script that is tailor-made to control to insert effects in Cubase. This script is far from perfect, but the main purpose is to give you ideas for what you can do with selection scripts. So if I press the button, I get a list of effects I can control and I select the frequency effect and the window is opened in Cubase. And now I can control properties in that effect. Now I control the filter one frequency and I can press and hold the dial and get a list of other things I can control. So let's say I want to control the filter one Q value. I select that and now I can control the Q value and so on. And if I select the compressor, I can also control things in the effect. And if I, for instance, want to control the ratio, I can do that. The next new feature is two new events you can use to react to when Stream Deck devices are disconnected or connected. So the bottom button I have on this page is using a script that reacts to device connect and disconnect events. So if I disconnect my left Excel device, it shows that it is now offline. And if I connect it again, it will show that it is online. The next new feature is what Elgato calls deep linking, which means that you can use anything that can access a URL, for instance, a web browser, to send information to the plugin. The plugin has a new deep link event with which you can receive deep links. And there is a new input action with which you can open a predefined web page where you can enter information and send it to the plugin.
So if I press this button, a web page is opened with the labels used by the input action. And if I enter information in these fields, and send it to the plugin, it will be received by the DeepLink event and displayed on the button. You can anytime without the use of an input action open this web page to enter information to the plugin. If you remove the parameters added by the input action and use only the address to the page, you will get a neutral page where you can input the three information parts that are available in the Deep Link messages. Please see the Deep Link scripting page in the documentation and the Deep Link event and the input action to get more information about this feature. The last new feature I want to mention is that you can now comment out sections of the script code. If you have a section of the script code you don't want the script engine to use, you can enclose it with slash asterisk and end with asterisk slash, and the script engine will completely ignore everything between those two markers. From the script engine's point of view, it's like if that part of the code doesn't exist. That's all for this update. Thanks for watching. Thank you.